Follow your heart. I can't help the way I feel. Well, if it feels good, then do it. Hey, we've all heard phrases like these regarding how our feelings should drive our decision making. This week, Pastor Tom gave a message to help us better understand the spiritual battle that goes with feelings and what we can take away from the Bible with regards to how to handle those feelings. And before we get into that, make sure that you go ahead, open the discussion guide that I left in the description. See, each week we provide you and your group with a video lesson as well as a guide designed to help you and your group use your time together in a way that builds relationships and to help you better know God. And depending on uh, so many different factors from your personality or what kind of family or home that you grew up in, we may have an idea that we're supposed to avoid feelings or we're supposed to let our feelings dictate much of our lives. But this week, Pastor Tom showed us that we were created to have feelings. God wants us to feel. In fact, feelings are a part of God's creation. He created us to feel a broad range of emotions from happy to sad to anger to feeling hungry. You see, as explained in Genesis, we were created in the image of God. Additionally, we also see throughout scripture that God too has emotions. And so we should treat our ability to feel as a gift from God. But as Pastor Tom told us, feelings are meant to influence and motivate our actions, not direct our actions. In fact, Pastor Tom also shared that you should question your feelings. And then he walked us through some tips on how to do just that. I want to dive into that idea a little bit further and to share with you some of the reasons why you should get into a habit of questioning your feelings and and then what to do if you find yourself being led by your feelings that are resulting in bad decisions. The first reason why we should question our feelings is feelings are often unreliable. Feelings can lead you in the wrong direction. You know, how many times, just think about this, have you thought, I know this is the right thing to do and I just feel it in my gut. Then you do it, but it doesn't work out. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but your gut, well, it's often wrong. Your intuition, well, it's flawed. Your emotions and feelings will often lead you down a blind alley. You can't depend on everything that you feel. Proverbs 14, 12 tells it this way. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Your feelings are not infallible. Just because you feel it, it doesn't make it true. And our feelings are often wrong. They often will guide us in the wrong direction. The next reason to question our feelings is to not be manipulated. See, throughout this message series, we've talked an awful lot about spiritual warfare and how our enemy, Satan, wants to use our thought life to drive us further away from God. Well, if we allow our feelings and emotions to control us and our decisions, then we become greater targets and an easier target for the enemy to attack our thought life through our feelings. Not only will our spiritual enemy leverage it as an opportunity to manipulate us, so too will people. You might see this played out in your life with salesmen that you encounter at the store or the car dealership. See, advertisements and salesmen, while they're designed and trained to tug at our emotions and to leverage our own feelings to the point that we make a decision they want us to make. Proverbs 25, 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. If we allow ourselves to be controlled by our feelings, we have a lack of self-control and so we become defenseless against manipulation. So protect yourself from being manipulated by people or by Satan. Next, question your feelings to please God. Don't let your feelings and emotions control your life. If we do that, we are susceptible to being ruled by our feelings. No longer does God rule our life, but our feelings do. No longer is Jesus the Lord of my life, but now my feelings are my Lord. If I make all my decisions simply based on how I feel, well, then I've made my feelings God and then God no longer can be my God. Romans 8, 6 through 8 says this, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. 
but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. If your decisions in your life are based on your feelings rather than what God says, you will not please God. So if you struggle to live your life apart from being run by your feelings, I, I want to give you just a quick three-step approach to overcome that. Here's what I'd love for you to do. Name it, claim it, and then change it. You can't tame it until you name it. So if you're unable to solve the problem until you, uh, you identify it. So start by naming the feelings or the emotions that keeps driving your decisions and your actions. Second thing you do is, is the Bible tells us to challenge it or claim it. Challenge what you're feeling. Don't automatically accept what you're feeling. Don't automatically assume that your initial feeling is accurate, the truth, it's correct, or it's even reality. Ask, are things really as bad or are they this way, what I'm feeling? Well, then next you change it. More accurately, let God change it. Paul tells us in Galatians that the Holy Spirit will give us a different set of feelings and emotions that are good fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Every day we should ask God to fill us with His Spirit. Before your feet even hit the floor coming out of bed, say, Holy Spirit, fill me today. I need your Spirit in my life because it's not by my might, my power, that I'm going to be able to manage my feelings or my moods. Well, I hope that this message series has been a powerful one for you where you have personally seen God move and work in your life. We know that there are real daily struggles many of us battle through, but know that God has already won for us. I encourage you to spend some time talking about this week's message and then feel free to reflect on the spiritual wins that you may have seen God make in your own lives in the last few weeks.